my friends, welcome to our humble playhouse. And from the bottom of our hearts, we thank ye much for being here with us. Tonight, in this most hallowed space, the Globe Theater, in London, England, in the year of our Lord, 1591, we shall present to you a most magnificent thing, a brand new play by the greatest living playwright in the English language, Mr. William Shakespeare. Ye <laughs> know the master's work. Ye know his earlier efforts, King Lear, Macbeth, Romeo and Juliet, contemptuous drivel. <laughs> Compared to the play he has prepared for ye tonight. And yet, I alone cannot this wonder do. Therefore, need we a merry band of players. <laughs> and so, at once to our task, actors, Disappear ye into the murky mists of the backstage, and we shall, ah, nay, stay some of you. <laughs> I see from the gleam in our audience's eyes that they are of a high level of intellect and perspicacity. They know the master's work so well, and so we shall play a game to see how well they can divine his spirit. Look you upon these characters in our play today. Look you fierce upon this lady here. She is a character written with a strong ambition, an ambition that drives her every waking moment. What think you is that ambition? Yes, she wants to be queen. Look you here upon this lady. She is deeply remorseful about something she did once. What is it, do you think, she is deeply remorseful about? She drowned her cat. She drowned her cat. <laughs> <laughs> Which is not always a bad thing. <laughs> oh. Oh. You don't know my cat. <laughs> <laughs> and this lady here, what job think you she has in the town? Wet nurse. Wet nurse. <laughs> <laughs> I don't suppose you mean it's always raining. <laughs> I, she is the wet. <laughs> my friends, prepare ye self. For a play complete with a woman who wants to be queen, a lady remorseful for drowning her kitty, <laughs> a woman who is a wet nurse. <laughs> what thinkest ye is the name of the play? <laughs> what? Surprise Shakespeare. Surprise Shakespeare. <laughs> <laughs> yes, the master's getting egotistical. <laughs> My friends, sit ye back and enjoy William Shakespeare's brand new play, Surprise! <laughs> Shakespeare! <laughs> Oh, I love walking. 
help you with you. Oh, those days, I wish we could have them again. Oh, I love how you've done your garden now. Oh, the flowers. Do you remember when I fell in love with, oh God, I don't remember his name. <laughs> There's been a few. Orlando. Orlando, right. Be that the one that you love the most? Yes, and the flower did tell so. He loves me. He loves me. No, no. He loves me. 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 He loves Gilda. Gilda. Good news. My dear friend, I have come to tell thee that I have been wed to a dear man, someone so handsome and fine. Orlando. What? Good news. We are expecting a child. What? It is early yet, but I hope thou couldst be with me and help me in the raising of my babe. Oh, Greta, if only, if only I could. <laughs> but thou hast been a wet nurse for all of my sisters. Why, indeed, oh. she, thee were a wet nurse for myself. <laughs> just a few years above me in age, and yet, what bounty you gave to me. <laughs> don't you see? These used to be bigger when I was around Orlando. <laughs> now, how can I possibly use them for anything else? But, but celebrate with me, friends, Mary Beth, Gilda, Orlando, come oh, out soon. I do, I do love you. Going to marry him. I used to love him a long time ago, but not anymore. It is already done. We are already married. What? <laughs> My love. That one. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh. uh, my sweet, thine eyes are five ten thousand stars. So much better than all the rest of the eyes. Yes, that is what thou hast said. I am so much brighter than any eyes e'er I stared into. <laughs> I knew it, Orlando. I have oh. shared the news of our pregnancy. I, we are pregnant. <laughs> <laughs> we shall labor much. <laughs> we shall risk our life in childbirth. <laughs> Orlando, thou art the bravest soul. Ah. Indeed. To risk your life to bear a child. <laughs> our friends Mary Beth and Gilda were just about to be kind enough to offer us for dinner tonight, here at their home. Aye, and yet, fair love, knowest thou, I do know this woman. Look here, not here. <laughs> <laughs> knowest thou that when I was young and foolish and knew not my wit, I loved her? <laughs> and I did love you, Orlando. The flower told me so. Ah, yes. <laughs> Such silliness with which our childish imaginations do play. And yet here we are, grown, adult, and mature, mature enough to know true love when it sings its songs. Look ye, does she not teach the angels to play the harp? Ah, uh, <laughs> uh, yes. If angels did play, there she would be teaching them, indeed. So angelic that I shan't touch. Let the babe touch my own breast. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, that would be disgusting. <laughs> We're lesser people, as they say. Uh, yeah, yeah. Ah. <laughs> it is thou your thunder in the midst. <laughs> <laughs> Aye. It could be a storm that comes to me. Perhaps, methinks it doth ill betoken the health of the queen. I, <laughs> thou callest. Ah, your majesty. Oh. Your Majesty, dear sister, Mary Beth, my sister, I have lowered myself to come to this commoner's house that thou insistest live to live in. Aye, dost thou like the internal garden? <laughs> <laughs> I like it too near, it would be quite beautiful. It is an idea that should take off soon. This indoor garden sh should someday be popular with the masses, no doubt. <laughs> I have come, as I hear, that there be some good merry news here. And lately, I have been quite somber, and 
I do require some good news. So, entertain me. Yes, my dear queen. <laughs> I, my most loyal, loyal friend and lady friend, I have been married to Orlando, who loves only me. I, I do not know you, but I mean very enjoyable. <laughs> to perchance one day become queen. Such was the dream of our dearest mother, and it happens to fall upon me. And yet I do remember how she would chase after me with those gleaming eyes and spitting daggers. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, I would ask for no one else to be my queen but the most beauteous of beings with I hold with, within my sight upon this very night. But I am afeard <coughs> that there is 
since two moons past, my health doth be declining day by day, and I no longer ah, fear I have the strength to be king. Ah, and having no heir, I do not know who shall reign upon my passing. Oh, do not remind me of the failure of my womb. <laughs> it's not my intention to make thy feel guilt. Poor sister, <laughs> thou be as barren as a dry field. Nay, nay, nay. <laughs> nay, nay, nay. For thou hast regaled upon my mind many a time as that it be my field which lay barren. Oh, speak, speak you not of madness. Uh, nay, my seeds bear no fruit. <laughs> my sweet sister, I shall go entertain myself outside in thy stables. Once thou stay here and heal my husband, I shall. Would you please visit the goats? They miss you so. Oh, I shall be away at once. <laughs> I do not mean to burden thee with my presence, but... In a, Tis no burden at all, your highness. In a strange way, this space here, the indoor garden, actually is helping me feel lighter. <laughs> but yet, the sorrow of my plight gives me a heavy heart. Oh. I knowest why this ailment has fallen upon me, for I am not that old of age. Okay. And before I had married my most beauteous of queen, my health was quite vigorous. Indeed, I do remember the jousting that you would perform. Aye. The juggling that you would compete in. Aye. The, the horse wrestling as well. <laughs> <laughs> ah, yes, yes, where I would take the equine by its throat <laughs> and wrestle it down to the ground. Indeed, and while his legs were kicking, you would grab it by the mane. Aye. And kiss it on the mouth. And yeah. In a sweet sign of victory. In a sweet sign of victory, that'd be the crest of our shield. The horse laying down upon its bottom. <laughs> but my beauteous queen, she gives me delicious food and ale to consume daily. And she does feed me quite forcefully, and I, being a very willing king, do consume that which she gives, and I, consumption perhaps, is burdening my sister. Thou hast consumption. Now, tis, tis an easy remedy to fix. Uh, <coughs> sit, sit down, my, my, my lord. I shall start you off on liquids only. <laughs> Very well. Symbol a broth of, of chicken. Aye, that sounds lovely. I would be so happy were you to come to true health here in my abode. Knowest this, that thou art able to bring my health back to its full fruition, thou wilt have a special place in my heart and in my kingdom. Come, my friend, hide here, and I shall explain myself upon their fast removal. My lord, those words mean so very much to me. I wish nothing more than to bring you back to health and to take a place of importance next to you. Aye. Aye. Oh. Speaking of place of importance. Oh, it's behind the gazebo. Aye. <laughs> Okay. I think he saw us not. And on this day, I mark my plan to make him healthy and to step into the queen's throne. <laughs> Indeed. I shall run to check the goats and my sister now. <laughs> Oh, he be the king, and she 
in love with him just enough to win his wedding ring so that she may supplant her sister as the queen. Tis not excellent matter for a play. <laughs> Indeed, <laughs> my lord Orlando, thy suspicions have proved true. Aye, aye, we are alone. You may not need to call me Orlando. You may call me Shakespeare. <laughs> <laughs> Surprise! <laughs> uh, uh, good Boratio. As I did work my way into that woman's heart, knowing she was kin to the royal family, to make her love and marry me, so that I may all their imbriglios partake in, and suck into my inkwell, so that then I may translate it to a play, ne'er have there been more characters in human form to inspire my imagination, and thou, thou shalt play the role of the king. Oh, indeed? Aye. Oh, then I shall finally have my chance upon the stage in front of the crowds. Aye, come, show me thy kingly bearing. Aye, more pufferies. Aye, more ribaldry. <laughs> Thou art truly a masterful director as well as playwright. I am actor too. <laughs> oh, my husband! Oh, my husband oh. Is it too late? What? Oh, nay, nay. Ah, my sweet lady, I do introduce you to my dear friend, Boratio. Oh, Boratio. Oh, I, I do. Uh, pleasure to meet thee. My dear husband, I have just heard the most lovely drama, something about a Montague and a Draculet. Oh, 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 do tell. Methinks it would make a fine comedy. Yeah. <laughs> they have fallen in love with each other. Oh, if I could eat more drama, I would be large as a boulder rolling down a hill. Uh, uh, my good lady, come, and I shall of boulders teach thee. <laughs> Horatio, stay thee hither and make friends with the members of this household. The more our ears are welcome in their conversations, the more our play shall sing. My lord, I have not seen thee such excited since our last trip to Denmark. <laughs> <laughs> ah, and yet, with what manner of ruse shall I ingratiate myself toward these people? Think, certainly I'm an actor. Oh. Hello, good ladies! Well, good day, sir. I'll welcome thee into my home. <laughs> I thank thee. Allow me to introduce myself, for I am Horatio. I am the bodyguard of Mr. Shake uh, Orlando. Oh, oh Pleased to meet you. Uh, oh, oh, my lady, the pleasure is all mine. <laughs> <laughs> 